Welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Lives. Today's episode is you're going to meet my coach and mentor, Dr. Shannon Irvin. She is, gosh, she has done so much for me and for my business in the last year. I got hooked up with her last August, and I was one of the first students she had in her brand new neuro coaching certification program. And I, I have, I'm a changed person and I was so excited to get her to come on my podcast and interview her and hear her story. She is a doctor of neuropsychology and she actually was, got interested in a doctorate program to help her because she got fascinated with the science of the brain and how it could help her because she was stuck. And now she has amazing programs that help people like the old Dr. Shannon. So I also was invited to be on her podcast. So I want to give her podcast a quick plug. It's the Epic Success Podcast. And my episode is 171. So you can hear about how her program helped me and a little bit more about my story you might not have heard yet. So also, she is getting ready to launch a free video series called The Unleashed Entrepreneur. And I can't wait for it, frankly, because whatever she puts out is pure gold. And I can't wait to be a part of, she has a Facebook group that she set up and we're going to be watching the video series and then she's sharing her takeaways and she's going to be handing out prizes and it's going to be a really great experience. That actually starts on the 27th of July. If you want to join that, that experience, then just go to my website, notyouraveragegrandma.com. And at the very top, there's a banner and you can click there and sign up for her video series. Like I said, it starts on July 27th and I think she's going to have it up till like the first week in August sometime. So if you're catching this after that, then it's, it's, oh, sorry, it's too late, but uh, most people get, get these episodes right away. So if you're on and it's still running, then check it out. I'm really, really excited about it. She does quality, quality stuff and her free training, you, you have so many aha moments and breakthroughs through it. And so uh, I'll see you there if you join, but anyways, let's get right to the episode and you can learn more about Dr. Shannon, my amazing coach and mentor. Welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Lives and I am so excited and so grateful to have one of my mentors and probably you've been the most impactful mentor to me, Shannon. Mm -hmm. So Shannon Irvine, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, I'm excited to be here and what a, what a sweet um, thing for you to say, you know, that, that really blesses me. Yes. And Shannon, I was, we were just talking before we got on here and I said, she's like the internet sensation in her space and she's all over the place. And I really feel fortunate to be a part of your small circle of mentors that started in the neuro coaching program that yeah. you had. So that just launched last really September is when we started yeah, it. It's well, it's coming up on a year now, which yeah. is just crazy to think of it. Yeah. Yeah. So like two semesters of school, mm -hmm. but, um, so <laughs> yeah. So, um, why don't we, cause there's so much I want to talk about and your story is so inspiring and I want my listeners to hear your story of perseverance because we tend to look at the person today and not right. know. And I remember actually when you were coaching me once and you said, don't look at me today and compare myself to you. Yeah. Because we tend to do that. Yeah, um, so why don't you introduce yourself so my listeners know really who Shannon is and what you do and who you serve. And, and the, you actually serve multiple groups because you have this great nonprofit, which I'd also like to touch on. Sure. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, thank you. So for those who don't um, hang out with us in the Epic Success Tribe, my name is Dr. Shannon Irvin, and I help entrepreneurs 
truly tap into the secret that they've been looking for to get their business to grow, and that is their mindset. Um, we approach it from a very different perspective. We help you train your brain to transform your business. In other words, eliminate those stories and those limiting beliefs from a brain-based perspective, uh, which is actually running 80 to 90% of your daily decisions and actions. And then we help you build a success pathway in your brain. Um, it is, it's just a joy. And I honestly fell into that as a consultant and coach by mistake when, um, you know, I'd started my nonprofit about 15, going on 16 years ago, which feels crazy to me, uh, Mosaic Vision. And we serve kids who have lost mom and dad to AIDS in uh, rural Africa and Uganda. And I was doing that. And I was also a, a business consultant helping b businesses get to six and seven figures based on my experience. I was doing both of those businesses under what I call stress success. I mean, to the outside world, people were looking in and saying, oh, you know, she's got, she's got, she's got a couple businesses that are doing well, right? But in reality, I was massively burnt out. I was working a ridiculous amount of hours. I was keeping the story alive that you had to work ridiculously hard to be successful, that you had to work long hours. I was managing everything from a to-do list. I was overwhelmed. I was exhausted. I was in a massive level of perfectionism and I felt like if I wasn't moving ahead that I was falling behind. So I always felt like I was on this treadmill and all of that was based on stories, which I didn't realize had been kind of automatically programmed into my mind since I was, you know, young. And, you know, my parents are amazing. They did a great job, but, you know, we all come with some type of, narrative, right? That comes from either our youth or maybe a young adulthood. And mine was very much that it was hard to make money, that um, you had to work really, really hard. And it was, it's quite a long story, but somewhere in my childhood, I connected my worth with what I produced in the world, my worth with my work, right? So if I was producing the most, I felt worthy. But if I wasn't, or if something was going wrong, or if there's a failure, or if somebody was judging me, I felt like worthless. I felt like I didn't have any value at all. So it was a roller coaster ride. And I wonder if like your listeners maybe have been on that same roller coaster and have experienced that as well. And it was at a moment where I should have been the most happy when everything kind of crumbled, but in a good way. Um, I found out that I was pregnant. My son is now almost 13, so 12 years ago. And moment that I really wanted more than anything in the world. I wanted to be a mom, right? And you wanted, waited. You had kids late yeah. in life. Yeah. Yeah. I had them later. I was 38 when I got uh, pregnant. So you guys can do the math there. <laughs> um, so I was so excited. But then as soon as the excitement had a moment to settle in, I started having this conversation in my mind around, oh my gosh, what do I have to give up? Because there's just no more of me to go around. And in reality, I, um, I love what I get to do. Like I, it really is something I love. I love serving my entrepreneurs and I love serving the, the AIDS orphans, but I sat on, I will never forget it. I sat on the edge of my bed and I just like had the ugliest cry you've ever seen. Just thinking, Oh my gosh, I've wanted to be a mom more than anything. And I will not be one of those moms. That's not going to be there and show up and be at my, my son's events and be there for him. It will, it is now my number one priority. So I started thinking, what do I, have, what do I have to give up? And in that moment, I call it a God moment because it was like one of those things, you know, every, even that moment when you're like kind of losing it. And then you have like this clarity of thought that comes from seemingly nowhere. <laughs> I had this momentary thought of like, what if it wasn't that I had to give it up? What if it's, I have to do things differently? And so I started musing about who in the world has, they seem to have, right? The, their family as their number one priority. They're running more than one business and they seem to not be insane, right? They seem to actually be enjoying their life instead of what I was doing behind the scenes, which was just massively stressed. My adrenal glands were failing. I was, you know, it, it was just very exhausting to be in that stress hamster wheel type of success. And, and you had your PhD at this point? Not that, no, not at this point. Okay. So okay. 
I had finished up my master's and I was um, literally enrolled in my doctorate in business. And I, I, in that moment, I thought about my, uh, somebody who I looked up to that seemed to have it all together. And I went and invested a silly amount of money at the time, um, about $50,000 to mentor with her. And she, I'm just, honestly, Lori, if I had to be real, really honest, I kind of was like, well, I really hope it's real. But in my mind, I'm like, I doubt it is. And I'm going to find out that I have to give out something. So all that was going on in my head, which now I know like, oh boy, now I know why I was so stressed. But when I got to work with her, what I found out was it wasn't the strategies. It wasn't the systems. It wasn't the, her team. It wasn't the to-do plan. It wasn't the goals. It was none of that. It was she thought differently and believed differently than I did about success, about failure, about money, about worth. And all of those things just became this mirror of the biggest difference. You know, we're all looking for something outside of ourselves as the, the difference maker, right? You know, somebody to either give us permission or to tell us that, you know, we've paid our dues and we worked hard enough. And so now success can come to us. But what I learned when my mentorship with her was that had nothing to do with it. And it had everything to do with how she conditioned her thinking, how she conditioned her mind to believe about those things, about failure, success, worthiness, money, impact, all of those things. And it opened my, it honestly made me obsessed. I'm like, well, if the only difference is thinking, then I got to see if there's something different. Like, do some people have a different capacity to think? And I started researching this, quickly discovering that no, unless there's an impairment, we literally have the same ability, same neurons, same synaptic joints and all of those things. And that's what started my obsession with neuroscience and neuropsychology and the, honestly, the brain science of success. And that's what made me do a hard pivot and, um, get my PhD in, I could say it's neuropsychology. That's what's on the piece of paper. But um, I dove so deep into the neuroscience because what I, the light bulb that went on to, for me was if I can just shift my thinking, there's no reason why my life and my results couldn't be the same. And that's what uncovered this whole desire for entrepreneurs to learn. So as I was going into these courses and these classes, I was learning about synaptic pruning, how you can literally prune away a pathway or a story that has been hardwired since, you know, youth. And then I learned about like, um, where you can plasticity, where you can actually build new skills and new ideas and new pathways in the brain without, without even actually physically doing things. And as I was learning this stuff, I remember, and I know Lori knows this, I tell people all the time, I, they couldn't wait to get rid of me because I was the entrepreneur in the neuroscience room asking them like, can you connect this with this? And then people can apply it. And boy, they were just like, goodness gracious, get this woman out of this program. You know, they're very true scientists. Too many but questions. Sure, right. We were solving problems. So I started using what I was learning to to kind of hack the bad thinking that I had, to hack the thinking that was keeping me stuck, to remove those stories about money being hard to make and removing the stories that people that made money were bad and removing that story that my worth was tied with my work. And as those pathways started to crumble, success started happening more easily and with less time and less energy and just in more in alignment. And here's what I knew at that moment. Like, I am not some special unicorn. I'm really not. Like, I am just a woman that loves her kids and her family and really wants to serve and do good in the world. And so as I kept seeing my success go from six to seven figures and having it be so much more freedom, so much more time available to really deeply serve, which is one of my big values, then I knew like, oh my gosh, my consulting that I'd done with my clients, I had 17 one-on-one -on -one clients at the time. I basically asked them to be guinea pigs. I'm like, okay, worked for me. Can we add this to your consulting? And we did. And their results just started skyrocketing. Marriages saved, like, you know, businesses growing to seven figures. And that's when I knew, like, I can't just keep this neuro 
coaching model, which is what we know it for now, uh, to myself and to my small group of one-on-one clients. I need to bring this online so that I can help millions of entrepreneurs tap into this God-given gift that we've been given, but most people don't know how to operate. So it's it's been a journey, Lori, but you know, with lots of highs and lots of lows for sure. But you know, getting to help people like you, you know, I don't know if everybody on your audience knows, but she's a master neuro coach certified through our certification program. And, you know, being able to help people, world changers like you, it's just, it really lights me up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And I think that, you know, one of the gifts that I've gotten through the program is not only the, the knowledge, right. But, and I've told you this, it's experiential. I mean, actually in there practicing coaching Yeah. and you're so great at allowing us to, to learn it and when we're not perfect. And, yeah. and I also feel that watching you, because we've been able to witness you coaching as well. Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the benefits of being in a group. But I just, that's so much real, real time learning. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. then you can take that. And, you know, through this process, I've gained so much confidence and one thing as a coach, because I was coaching in the health and fitness space before I got branched onto my own, but, and my listeners know that, but uh, one of the things that was so interesting is that I was more of an advice coach. Right. Right. Very Which common. Is, yeah. And yeah. so I love the whole model where everything is within inside of the client and there's unlimited potential within everybody. And that knowing that and seeing that and watching people really unfold and blossom into this person that they never knew was inside of them yeah. is, and that's really pretty incredible. So I think, you know, knowing how to coach and not give advice, but actually knowing how to ask the right questions and how to kind of lead them on a path where they do it's self-discovery, but they just need a guide. And that's, yeah. that's really been powerful. Yeah, it, it's it's super important, and I I see it a lot in the coaching space, whether it be health or business or life, where they're and, and it's nobody's fault. It's kind of like the industry in a, in and of itself isn't transformation based; it's advice based, like you said. So I call it symptom versus source, where it's not enough as a coach to have great little language tricks and advice to give to hope to shift somebody using only your experience, right? Not, not that that's bad, it's good, but it's, it's not gonna get to the source and actually create brain-based transformation. Brain-based transformation ha- happens when, with their particular story, we uncover the things that have been blocking them specifically, their language, their words, what they're saying to themselves, and take them through part of the neuro coaching model, which you know is the mind matrix, and al- allow them to uncover the truth and then build that truth as a network in their brain so that they no longer have the old tape running. So, what I see a lot is well meaning coaches out there tr- getting trying to get symptom based shifts and language shifts and, you know, just reframe and all those things, those are tools. But what will happen is they might do that in the moment, right? In the moment, they might maybe, oh, yeah, and through willpower, they feel good for a moment. But the tape's still there, right? So if the tape is still there telling them they're not worthy unless they're, you know, super successful or whatever the tape is, then they might shift for the moment. But when the next big hard thing comes or the next big challenge comes, that tape is still running autopilot. So it's still running 80 to 90% of their decisions and actions and it will come back. So I, I really hope through the certification and through our Epic Success group that we are calling people forward to true transformation and to not be afraid of that as a coach. I, I hear some coaches feel like, oh, well, if they're massively transformed, then they won't need me anymore. And I disagree with that so wholeheartedly. Like the coaches that I've been able to get the best transformations personally, I have reinvested and reinvested and reinvested over and over again. Not because I don't believe I can transform on my own, but because they held space for my biggest transformation. So there's like a deep trust there. And I know because reality is, you know, when we challenge ourselves more and we try harder and we do different things, 
we're going to get to a next level when we won't have been there before. And so having the confidence that I am in a coaching situation with somebody that I know will hold space when I get into that next level, next devil kind of conversation, whether I never have that again or not, it's so valuable. So I feel like coaches are really missing out on not having to constantly add new clients, but actually going deep with their clients through this mm, model. I like that. Yeah. So I want to ask you about something that came to mind while you're talking about the, um, you know, you're, you're talking about time. So mm -hmm. time is such a challenge for so many people. Yes. And I know I was the, also the hamster on the wheel, mm -hmm. but um, I want to talk about it in terms of lack and abundance. Okay. Because, you know, one of the things that I love about you and you practice so much is abundance. Yeah. Like giving. And yeah. you're never threatened by anybody who has a similar program. You're all about, you know, rising together yeah. and helping. And, and, and so when I think of that and I think about time, it's almost like, so what would you say to somebody who says, I never have enough time, but yet, is that a lack, is, it, you know, in, in a way, is it kind of a lack? Because, yeah, it's such a great question. We get kind of caught up in, and I, I, what the vernacular that you hear out there is, is scarcity or lack versus abundance, right? That's the conversation. But in reality, it's not, it's no more than a story that you heard that was repeated so often. You didn't choose it. It wasn't your fault. Otherwise you probably wouldn't have chosen it. It probably happened when you were young and your family or maybe your first job or whatever. But somewhere along the line, you agreed that you were so busy. Maybe you heard it like it, one of your parents, like, oh, I don't have time. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And you wanted their love, right? So you knew to get love, maybe like shh, being busy, 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 busy was the way to get their attention. Right now, all of a sudden you have this connection between love and working so hard that you don't have any time. And so whatever that agreement was, and I know when mine happened, it was probably, I was about eight or nine years old. Right. So think about it. The decisions you make as an eight or nine year old are not the decisions you would make today. You would not, you would not sign up for that today, but you didn't know and you weren't aware and you um, didn't choose it. It actually just was repeated so often. You just as a child accepted it as truth. And once it automates, then you kind of get in this path of you're not choosing to be overwhelmed and too busy, but it's, it's an automatic process that's 90% of every decision you make. So the decisions you're making with that story automated are not the decisions that I make right now, right? They were, but I shifted it. And the reason why it's super important to do this because the reality is, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And I used to hate it when people would say that. I literally, when I was in that hamster wheel and the to-do list that looked like Santa Claus list, you know, and crossing them off and never getting to the bottom. I remember when I'd hear somebody saying, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. What are you doing with yours? And, you know, and I would always feel like that was such a, a, a I don't know, just a spit in the face kind of thing. But in reality, the, if you look at yourself, you compare yourself, and this is definitely what I did, you know, 12 plus years ago, I compared myself to the mentor I ended up hiring. I'm like, wow, she seems to be spending time on the beach. She seems to be spending two to three hours at work. How is she doing that? So get really curious about where you, the person you want to be, the mm. success you want to have, the values you want to create from all that hard work and lack of time. and start analyzing well, what are they doing, right? And when you start to reverse engineer what they're doing, you realize they're not working from a to-do list. They're not chasing every last opportunity at the sacrifice of their main value and their main vision. They are steadfast in, I'm going to this one place and everything is going in that one direction at one time. They are doing two to three things a day and calling that a success. And then if they do more, that's just, you know, whipped cream on top, but that's not like the meat of their day. And the more I started uncovering the story that gave some kind of assignment of worth to the volume of work that I did, and I, I really unpacked that, the reality of that is it's a lie. 
Because if that was true, Lori, then every single person that has a million things to do and not enough time to do it would be uber successful. Mm -hmm. Every one of them would be successful. And I don't know about you, but when I was back in that place, all I felt was exhausted and couldn't wait till it was time to sleep, right? So it's, it's a matter of recognizing, yes, it is only 24 hours in a day. And how am I spending them based on who I'm being? So if I am being the person that I'm exhausted, I don't have time. Oh my gosh, my to-dos, I just can't get down to it. Oh, I'm so tired, right? If that's where I'm operating from, what kind of decisions do you think you're going to make from that place towards your vision and towards your success? Inspired, right. focused, mm -hmm. excited, yeah. or yeah. just, you know, check in a box because you can't even lift your finger because you're so tired, right? Versus, okay, who do I want to be? And really creating, crafting for yourself, deciding in advance, deciding right now today, okay, yeah, maybe I, that has been my past, but what, who do I truly want to be? And really getting detailed about that and then watching to, to see what are you telling yourself that is going to stop that? So that's exactly is part of our, you know, neuro coaching, but it's part of what we do when we, when we define who we want to be, then we can look at each thought and ask ourselves, does that thought get us to that place or does it keep us stuck and, and chained away from that place? And that begins the open discovery around is my, is my thinking creating the success I want? Yeah. So it sounds like instead of looking at it from a lack and abundance, look at the lack that you're feeling, of, yeah. you know, that you're feeling this lack. Well, I don't have more time. I don't have enough time. Right. And then uncovering what it is that you think about time. So there's the, there's an underlying belief, which yeah. AKA limiting belief. Yes. And then you have this kind of truth meter. So you kind yeah. of have it, you measure it against what, what you said you were like, kind of invalidating it as yeah. a truth, right? Yeah. So, yeah. and then you have, you have examples, which then can disprove that that's, you know, really re real. And so, yeah, it's such a great process that is incredibly life-changing for the people yeah. that um, really learn it and master it. And, and then as you were saying about, you know, ha having coaches and mentors who ha save the space as you move up to your next level, because we're, you know, if we want to keep growing, we've got to keep like hitting that uh, next uh, step. But um, yeah, it's taking um, that and applying it at every step you go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it really is. a it, it is being willing to, to start to get curious about the thinking process. And the, here's the thing that I want to challenge your listeners with. It's like, look, if I gave you a key and said 90% of the time, this key opens the door to your success. Do you want it? Right? Well, 97% of people say no, they'd rather stress, they'd rather work hard, and they would rather not have enough time. That's why the 3% are the 3%, right? They take that key and they say, wait a minute, if 90% if of what gets created in my world happens from an automatic subconscious place, then I want to make sure I agree with everything that's in there, <laughs> right? Because if it's running on autopilot and it's running my life and mm. guys, like it doesn't just run your business. It runs your health. It runs your relationships. It runs what you feel about yourself. It is running your life. So if you know that, and this is the key that unlocks the door to success, most, especially entrepreneurs, because that's the people that I mostly spend my time with, they spend 90% of their time struggling on systems and strategies and everything external to themselves, and maybe 5 to 10% on on their mindset and on really training their brain to succeed, really choosing their thoughts and deciding in advance. And it's literally, we need to flip the switch, literally flipping a success switch. Because when you spend more time getting curious about what stories are automated and neutralizing them, more time on building a success pathway in your brain. And at that point, any strategy, system, funnel, whatever that you pick up, will work better because the 
operator, the person running it is going to be thinking more clearly like a very successful person versus somebody who's struggling. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, before the neuro coaching program and I was in that, you know, I, I did affirmations mm -hmm. and I believe in affirmations. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they work, but you know, I, I now I call them fluffy affirmations because you know, they're, they're, you know, and they might be somebody else's. I, what I used to get people to do is you have to come up with your own affirmations. Yes. Don't, you have to come up with your own, but it's so different when you actually create them based on, you know, like the reverse of your thoughts, like yeah. this is what I want to be. And at first, you know, it's like so uncomfortable, but so, yeah, it's, it's yeah. just, you know, it's like exercise. You just got to keep doing it. Yeah. The muscles are really yeah. sore at first, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good analogy. Yeah. We call that brain priming and it is the difference maker. It's not that affirmations are bad. They're good. It's a good tool, but you said it, is there somebody else's words about in general, what is and could be versus uh, a brain-based approach, which we do with brain priming, which is literally taking the truth that you want to automate in your brain, the, the story that you want running on autopilot and creating a process where with your specific words, we, we get it automated into your mind. And that, that is the game changer because once it automates, once that, what you want, your vision and the truth that's in opposition to the lie that you believed for so long without permission or knowledge, once that's on automation, you're not thinking about it. It's not effort. It just is automatically running that 90% of every single decision. And we know decisions create actions and actions create results. So it is the piece that most people are looking for that they're missing. And they feel like because it's looking inward, that it's maybe not a good investment of your time because busy is what we've been taught, right? Busy, ask for permission, always constantly be moving. But if you ask, like I have on my podcast, all the six, seven, and eight figure entrepreneurs, what do they spend the majority of their time on? This is what they're answering. It's their mm. mindset. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Well, you know, and I, I started a long time ago, probably, it's probably been two years now, um, before I got really into the whole doing my own thing because- yeah my beach body background was, yeah. I was in full force doing that. And so when I started really kind of stepping away from it, Hal Elrod's um, morning miracle book is one mm -hmm. of the first things I read. And it's just yeah. so interesting how it's just, it is so mindset. It's a habitual, regular routine, which foundation is mindset, which yeah. is very interesting. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it is. Hal and I got to have a great conversation on his podcast and he came on mine too. And, and, uh, just talking about the the brain science of um, of belief, and that's a big component on what his his book's all about. Yeah, I should also say you have a great podcast. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, so I'll make sure that's in the show notes. So um, let's fast forward because when we really started connecting, and this is really crazy, Shannon and I. I think you initiated a chat in mm -hmm. on Facebook. So it's crazy how I, I believe in like kind of serendipitous stuff. Yeah. And so here we, you know, we, I, and I didn't even realize this cause I was looking back to get today before um, we had this interview and it was in May of 2017 and we had met, I guess, at marketing impact Academy. We had met at marketing impact yeah. Academy and then we talked more at business by designs first Yes. One of the first yeah. events that we mm -hmm. came to. Yeah. Yeah. So this was like a year and a half later. Yeah. So it, like, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, or no, maybe, maybe, yeah, it was a year and a half later. Cause that was fall of 2018. And uh, it's so funny because I never really thought, you know, I was getting a lot of what I was building in my business from James at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was also mentoring you. Yeah. And, and I love your story because at the first event I went to, you, you spoke, you were one of the finalists for the Breakthrough Award. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the journey of your first year trying to get into the online business. Ooh. And yeah. I love the fact that here you are, that somebody with a PhD in neuropsychology, and you applied it in your offline business and had major success. And here mm -hmm. you moved to the online space. And it wasn't like this instant success. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. And so the perseverance is so yeah. 
I think such a great story for the listeners because you, but you just believed so much in what you were doing and who you wanted to help that per, that underlying purpose drove you. Yeah. Um, and so you kind of were, were the webinar. I say you're the like Rudy of webinars because you just like kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. Doing yeah. it, and doing it. Yeah. yeah. My belief never wavered. And that's the thing. Once you train in the, the things that we were talking about today, failure had a different definition for me. So yeah, when I brought it online and I did have an expectation that it would be easy. So when we, when I, when I was met with a different outcome than what my expectation was, I didn't look at that as failure. I looked at that as information that was going to lead me to success. Mm. And so that I'm now hear me clearly. I am not saying that it wasn't disappointed. I'm not saying that it wasn't hard. I'm not saying any of those normal emotions that comes when something you want isn't aligned with what you get. I, I still have that human experience, but it didn't change my output. So yeah, the first time I, I, you know, I was very used to, um, communicating, to my one-on-one -on -one clients when I was offline, I didn't really have to tell people what it was that they, why they needed to do this as I am today. And um, I started telling people what they needed, right? And that's not in marketing, you just, that's not what you do. <laughs> and so um, I was, you know, oh, I was so surprised, right? But it gave me the information to just become obsessed about the people I wanted to serve and talk to them and interview them and what is it that you're struggling with and what is it that keeps you up at night and what is it that you want most in the world? And the more I, I think the first webinar, I don't think I, I think I maybe had one or two sales. It wasn't not very much. And, um, so it was a beta. So I offered like, I think 10 more people to come in for free as long as they filled out a extensive survey for each piece of the puzzle. Cause the reality is I know it works and I knew it worked with multiple billionaires. So I knew it worked. And so as they were getting these massive breakthroughs, I was getting so excited. And now we launched again, like a few weeks later, and we had a little bit more success. And the reality was, this was all for me as I was getting better and better and better at communicating what it was that my future clients needed to hear in order to say yes to themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's every webinar I did as long as I was able to impact more people and more people were getting that transformation, it was a win. And I just kept launching and launching and launching. And I think we ended up doing like, I don't know, it was somewhere between 20 and 30 webinars. I can't remember the number I used to know now I've forgotten, but a lot of webinars in that first year. And then it wasn't until like, I really took in all of their information and just kept improving, improving, improving that it hit that tipping point and really started getting some, some momentum. We had some six figure uh, webinars and it's been that way uh, since then. But most people give up at the one and the two. And the only reason why I didn't is because of this neuro coaching that I'd done on myself. I was committed a hundred percent into transforming a million, at least a million entrepreneurs lives, if not more. And so the option of quitting when something doesn't didn't work wasn't there for me. It just wasn't because it wasn't about me. It wasn't right. about, you know, yeah. me at that point, it, you know, did it sting? Yes. Did my ego get a little bruised? 100%. Did I have a couple hours of like, Oh, I really wanted this. Of course. But then I'm like, okay, no, no, no. What do they need? What, what's next? How do I serve deeper? How do I serve better? How do I make a more irresistible offer? And that was, a, it was such a journey. And I learned a lot about myself during that time about how you really understand how committed you are to your vision when the vision has becomes nothing about you and toward the end. And that's really what it, what it had morphed into is uh, a, an obsession with every entrepreneur getting the keys to their success. And that, well, and that, you also have the purpose of funding your yes. nonprofit. So, yeah. which was, yeah you know, is, is benefiting greatly from this. Yeah, we do. We, we cover um, hundred percent of the administration uh, of the cost of the nonprofit. So now anybody who donates all, every single cent of that goes directly to Uganda to help the orphans. And that was a big, big core driving motivator for me, for sure. Yeah. Such a great yeah. thing. So anyways, then, yes. So we talked at the event where you were up for the 
Breakthrough of the Year Award. Yep. Then, of course, you know, I knew you had a, a great program, but, you know, I, it, I didn't really need that at the time. Mm-hmm. But fast forward to, and this was, gosh, I'm trying to think. It was, yeah, about eight months later. And I, when I go to these events, I like to change my seat. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't sit in the same seat because I like to have new conversations. Yeah. And so I think it was a second day and I just mm-hmm. sat at a new table and I, you, you sat right next to me, which I didn't, it wasn't even expected. And then you, I don't know, I don't know how it came up, but you were telling me and some, I think you might've been telling somebody else. So it wasn't like you were trying to get me to come on and yep. you were telling somebody else or, or maybe James mentioned it. And I was like, yeah. What? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you have a neuro coaching program. And yeah. it was just like such the perfect thing for me that I was looking for, for my growth and my, and, and, you know, it's, and I said this when I did a testimonial video for Shannon, and it was like, I wanted to be a, a counselor coach, you know, somebody who impacted people and helped them inspired them to make change positive change in their life for most of my life but instead i did what i was supposed to do or what i thought i was supposed to do you know just a logical brain Mm -hmm. you know making the income doing the corporate job yeah and i have never felt more aligned and more you know purpose-driven and that is all because i coincidentally said, I mean, I probably would have seen your ads, you know, but I feel so fortunate to have been a part of the first group of neuro coaches and so excited to, you know, be a part of the community. And it's, I, I, and you know, if you had not up leveled, you would, you would not be doing this, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a ripple in the pond effect, right? So as you grow, like you, and that's the thing we, we kind of get caught up in the like, what is my purpose? I've got to know my purpose right now, every little detail of it. And the reality is, if you would have asked me back when I first came online, was I going to be teaching coaches this model? It wasn't in my mind yet. I mean, I wanted to impact millions, but as I, it it was like, you do, you up level and you're helping more people. And then I'm like, wow, I, even if I reach a million, I'm not going to reach all you know, everyone. And then that really started this fire in me. I'm like, I've got to teach other coaches this. They've got to know like how to use this model so that they can get that transformation. I didn't have that in my mind when I first brought my business online. And I don't, I think that's like the misnomer. I think that comes from maybe education, right? Pick your college, know exactly what you're going to do for the rest of your life when you're 18 years old or whatever that kind of mentality is that we get indoctrinated in. So we think like, I don't know what my purpose is. I really believe like your purpose shifts in seasons and with different vantage points. Like you don't know what you don't know yet. And you're waiting to have the whole picture to get started. But what if getting started is what's necessary in order for you to get the big picture. Exactly. So That's so I'm, well said. I, yeah. I can't wait for the future. You know, with, through the neuro coaching, I've got another idea that is going to probably launch in 2021. So that's super exciting me, to me too. Again, all with the heart of let's reach as many people as we can so that they really step into who they truly are. And you and I both agree and believe in this. Like we're always looking for that thing outside of ourselves to validate us. And in reality, it's been in you all this time. We've just layered it over with all these wet blankets of not enough, don't have what it takes, not sure, don't know my purpose. And when you start to peel those back and peel those off and really uncover the the power that's within you. And especially when you start training your brain to align with what you really do want, really it's uh, sky's the limit. Yeah. I love that because I, you know, I, the work that Jonathan Fields does, Mm -hmm. that's kind of really, that changed me a lot and, and, and validated a lot that I knew was inside of me that I didn't know before. And it was a real validation that I was an advisor sage and those are my two types and that's what I'm supposed to do. So it's the work, the work that sparks you inside 
yeah. and that will lead you to your purpose. But yeah, yeah, just like you said, until you start like doing the work and figuring it out, it doesn't, those kind of light bulbs don't come. Yeah. But, light bulbs don't go off. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been wonderful. Amazing. I'm so excited that you came on here and um, my listeners can hear from you and, and hear how much a mentor matters. Mm. I, I didn't seek out a mentor until, gosh, I was 59 years old. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a boss started. could be a mentor. Girl but I know. just getting started. <laughs> Trust me, watch this woman because she is on fire and she is yeah. just getting started. She's going to help so many people really uh, get to the next place in their life. And I'm so, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Well, thank you for being by my side. You got it. All right. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into the Not Your Average Lives podcast. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe on iTunes if you have an Apple device. You can find free resources and learn what else I have going on at the moment that might interest you on my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you liked this episode, it would make my heart so happy if you could leave me a five-star rating. You can also add a review to let me know what you like about this podcast, which will help spread the word about it to others who need a little midlife inspiration. As always, be you, listen to your inner voice, and focus on reigniting that boss spark so you can start living your own, not your average life.